Do you find yourself overwhelmed by details, not knowing what to paint and what to leave out of the painting? Well, in this video, we're gonna dive deeper on the concept of large shapes of value. And I'm gonna show you how it can help you basically not be overwhelmed by anything, not worry about the details and just paint freely and beautifully based on those large shapes and achieving the beautiful results you're after in watercolor. So let's get to it. Okay, so let me show you how I do this, how I apply the concept of large shapes of value to basically avoid any worries about uh, the details themselves. So what we're gonna do is, I have five reference photos here, let me show you. And what we're gonna do is a magic trick where we turn them to black and white. Now, when you look at these black and white, you can actually really see the larger shapes that compose the scene. Now, sometimes these large shapes are only large in their importance. So for example, the second one, you see boats, that's only important because it's pretty much the only detail there. Uh, but for the most part, these shapes will also be large. So what we're gonna do is go over them one by one. I'm gonna show you how I draw and paint them like that by focusing on the large shapes. Let's start first with that cityscape. And by the way, after this, I'm gonna choose one of them and paint it in more detail just to show you how I take this and apply it to an actual painting. Uh, so let's get started with the first one and that is that cityscape. So what I see here, uh, if you look at simple values, uh, is one shape for the sky and then where the buildings begin, you get to see this shape of uh, the buildings themselves and the, the cityscape and it's a little lighter, but it, it, it's actually a combination and let me zoom in So it's actually a combination of lights and darks and strong contrast. We'll get to that later on We do have that very gentle mountain ridge in the background. So that's nice uh, And then look at what happens here really close to that edge where the we see the last couple of buildings uh, We go down and we see that river flowing through now look at that beautiful pattern like that and it flows all the way into our foreground right here and the same thing kind of happens on the other side right now look at what happens here do I care about all these small details within what I'm working on not really and that's my point these are the things that make the painting if you can make this larger focus on these small shapes paint them accurately, the rest of the details within them will fall into place and that's the thing that misleads a lot of people. Now when I'm drawing the more detailed yes, I, version, I will add this, for example, this prominent building here, maybe a couple of small details here and there, that boat that is practically connected to, uh, to this port. Um, all of these small edges do play an important role in the shape, but overall that's what makes the painting. And we have that little piece of land there, whatever it is, with cranes and stuff, or, or is it the boast, boast, boats, <laughs> masts, that's what it is, right? Now let me show you how I painted based on that, solely on that. I'm not gonna show you too much of my uh, uh, palette view and uh, bucket and all of that, because we will see that in the more detailed rendition. Just, it's not important right now, the technique itself, okay? I just wanna show you how I paint these and make something out of them. So, uh, we're gonna paint the river, Right, forget about technique for now, just look at how the composition and interest, they all are created in this stage, right now. That's the thing that makes or breaks the painting. Yes, you do want to worry about edges here. So I like to have some interest in them and, and for them to make sense. Yes, there's a boat here that makes a gap, uh, right, and it, it leaves a trail after it, which you can leave or you don't have to, you know, whatever you want to do with it. Right, but you get that basic shape in like that for the water. The buildings are gonna be kept quite light. Like this, there's a gap here between the boats and the docks. So yeah, we can get that, we can get the gaps, but look at what happens here. This is in its essence what is important. Now we do have the sky, of course, right? That's another big shape. So we have the sky, like so. Fairly light, but still not white. Okay, and you wanna have that in mind. So that's gonna be our sky. And then we are gonna have that mountain ridge that is pretty light. So I'm gonna do some wet and wet just to get that in, um, just to show you. So those are our mountains in the background and the rest is just not as important, right? So yes, you do have variation within the shape. So for example, this building, the side is a little darker and you have all these small details for the small buildings and you know, a lot of highlights and a lot of stuff there. You have some buildings here showing, you see their side, some of them are in the shadow, but that is pretty much everything you need to convey that, okay? And it's really important to understand, one, two, three, four. 
So one shape is the sky, another shape is the mountains, another shape is the river uh, or the whatever it is, and another uh, shape is those buildings that are lit. That's it. Okay, let's do another one. I'm gonna run through these fast because we're gonna need to also then focus on one and paint that. So, horizon line, somewhere in the lower half, okay? We have this very gentle mountain ridge, and yes, there are some clouds. You can decide if you wanna put them or not, right? But it's one, two, three for me, and four will be the boats themselves. As I mentioned, sometimes that's gonna be our subject matter because that's, that's what there is in the scene, right? There isn't much more than that. And so that's gonna become one of your shapes, okay? The shape uh, takes a couple of, of forms. One of them is, yes, how, uh, how big it is, right? That, that matters, but also how important it is conceptually, okay? So I'm gonna start with the sky, pouring in this, I don't know, light value, light wash, right? As I get to the mountains, I'm gonna use a slightly uh, darker paint, but it's gonna be again ever so slightly just to convey that there is something there. Um, I'm doing it wet and wet, but you don't have to. You can just stop where the mountains are and then paint them. The water to me starts very light and then it goes a little darker the lower it gets. So we can actually capture that feeling like this, right? This part here sipped through, that's fine. Uh, and then if you want to capture a few ripples, again, I'm doing this like a, like a time-lapse kind of thing, but you know, there are of course ripples so you can catch them, wet and wet, whatever technique you want. But again, this is the shape. The ripples, yes, they are important. Sometimes they will be very important. It depends on uh, the subject matter. But what's really important in the vast majority of cases is what you see right now. And just these large shapes. There are the boats. We cannot have boats without those masts. So here are the masts. Again, I'm running through this, doing this, you know, practically wet and wet, just to show you how basic this is, okay? And then you can strengthen the horizon line if you if you choose to, just to show the mountains better or show a few more boats. But that's that. That's the subject matter right here. Let's move on to the next one. So we have this beautiful <laughs> haunted looking house I actually have been planning on painting this scene for a long time just didn't get the chance to really now here the drawing does become a little more complex so let's simplify it a bit we have this big wall we have this roof we have this shape goes like this triangular sh simple right keep it simple like that that's pretty much it that is pretty much it, okay? And don't forget, we're gonna zoom in on one of these scenes, probably this one. Uh, I did wanna do the flowers, which you will see later on, but the thing is I already painted them, so I'll direct you to that video. But in any case, house, haunted house, okay? What do we have here? So the house itself isn't white, so we can actually go ahead and cover it with this maybe pale wash. Why? Because that's gonna make the sky light. Okay, now the thing that really, and there's the chimney, the thing that really helps with the atmosphere here uh, are those foggy trees. So we can actually get some of those wet and wet. So if we pre-wet the sky, okay, again, technique isn't really what matters here. It's more about the overall composition. And then you get those trees in and you don't forget to darken because they are darker than the house. Something like this, right? Mysterious trees. And this is borderline abstract, right? It doesn't look uh, necessarily even representational yet, but I do want you to understand that that's the thing that's responsible for a painting looking good. It's, I know it's so bizarre and sometimes hard to believe, but it is usually that, okay? There we go here. Make the trees darker, they're darker than the house. Right, and if you feel like you've gone too dark, you can always lift back, so like if this wall feels too light, you know, those are the kinds of things you may test out on a thumbnail, right? And then you come back with some uh, wet, uh, very thick paint, and you can get some details like the roof, or you know, of the details here, the door, the windows. But look at what we created here. And this, I don't even need to necessarily demonstrate the more detailed versions. Just look at that, that's so cool. And if you, you're having a hard time reading this, then yeah, you can drop maybe this drain pipe here. Uh, you'll have an easier time, maybe a window, a dormer, this shadow on the roof, uh, whatever it is, you can darken the entire roof, of course. It's gonna um, dry a little lighter. You can put an emphasis on the chimney if you want, whatever that is, doesn't matter, but that's what, what makes the painting. You have to understand it. Next up is that a uh, bouquet of flowers that we already painted. This one's fairly detailed, so let me keep it, let me keep it simple. We have that uh, window thing, 
right? And then, or whatever, balcony, and then we have that, you know, vase, the handle, the flowers. And I'm gonna post this as a separate video too, by the way, of the flowers. Uh, I wanna show you, it's basically how to paint flowers by not painting flowers. Look at this shape here. This big shape that's connected to the shadow on the balcony. We're not painting petals. We're not painting trees in the background. We're not painting a road. We're painting these very basic shapes. So starting with the background, which is slightly darker. So let's push it to be dark. Now, again, these are shapes. So what is important about shapes? Their value and their shape itself, right? And let's not forget the edges of the shape are important. And so we wanna make sure that the edges tell the story. So at the very least, the edges have to be accurate, okay? That's what you want to pay attention to, the edges of the shape. I know people think it's the details, it's the textures, it's the whatever. It's none of that. It's the edges of the shapes. That's really important. So I'm going to try and keep the process later short because we're now running on uh, already nine minutes just for this demo, but it is important. Now, this is dark, this is lighter. So this shadow here, which connects to the flowers, you see? And how do I paint the flowers? Let's paint them like this. It's just a light shape with some shadows in it. See, those are flowers, 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 flowers. Yes, yes, yes. I'm not kidding you. And then connect it here. And look at what happens to that cast shadow. It's darker. So that's another shape. It's a little darker, but still connected. And that edges for that shape also matter. So you're gonna paint them, paint those edges, right? Then maybe there's a bit of a detail here in the flower, right? Maybe there are some deeper shadows within the flowers, but look at what happens here. This is all you need. You don't need anything more than that, right? The more details you do, the more you paint, the, the larger you paint this, right? You will be able to tell a better story, but that's the essence of this story right here. Those major shapes. Let me lift back that base for the vase like that. And look at what we got here, just beautiful. And next up, and this is a funny example, so we have this swan, and it's basically a dark background, a light swan, and maybe the ripples in the water, right? So here you actually have to draw the swan, but let's keep it simple for the sake of, again, this is just a simple demo. Here's a very basic shape for the swan, its tail on the water, right? Beak, neck, and look at what happens here where the ripples are. It's a little lighter than the water, okay? So how would I paint this? We can actually start from the darkest darks. Uh, this, this is something I like to knock out of the way uh, sometimes early on in these paintings because you, when you have your darkest dark, you kind of know how to paint the rest. Um, so just something to have in mind. You don't have to. You can go the traditional uh, route and paint, you know, light to dark, paint the lights, uh, but for me, that looks like something that will work a little better right now, just for us, you know, to better notice what we're doing. So here's where the water ends and that kind of lighter shape begins, okay? And I'm gonna paint around the other side, same kind of a trick, trickery, that we're gonna pull on the viewer. And basically we painted a swan, right? But look at this, the water here stay a little dark until they go a little lighter here, okay? Uh, same goes for this side. So let us paint the lighter section of the water, which is actually composed of also shapes within it. But for simplicity's sake, again, we're looking at the big shapes of value. We're not looking at the small details of value. Remember that. Remember that and you'll do well. There we go. That's the shape of ripples. Yes, you can be fancy. You can do some wet and wet. Get some ripples in like before. Be fancy all you want. That's not the thing that makes the painting beautiful or uh, looking correct, especially from afar. The thing that does that, of course, there are a lot of factors. This is not the only thing, but the big shapes are key, okay? And you get the wings, some details on the wings, some shadows right here, see, like that. And you got a swan, basically. So let me zoom out for a second. So it took us about 12 minutes to draw and paint all of these thumbnails, five thumbnails, super quick. This is the kind of study I want you to be doing. And then this is the same approach you'll do when you make a scene larger. That's exactly the same thing you'll do, believe it or not, okay? You'll base your work on the large shapes of value, right? And you can decide how detailed to go or how detailed not to go. But that's the thing that takes precedence. You can already read these. The rest of the details are just additions. 
And of course, larger paintings means more time mix mixing, sorry, <laughs> mixing more paint and all of that, right? They will take more time, more effort, more speed sometimes to execute a, a smooth, even wash. But that's really what it takes to make a painting look good, to not worry about the small details, to not get bogged down in the things that just aren't as important, okay? That's the thing that makes a painting a painting. Now let's uh, take a new piece of paper and I'm gonna dive deeper on this cityscape, still keeping it very fast, okay? I will upload this as a separate one because I don't do enough florals and I will do this probably as a swan in the future and the other scenes as well. But for now, let's just go for this because this has a lot of small details in it. I wanna show you how you completely circumvent that. So as I mentioned, this is the scene I decided to paint. There's a beautiful view of Marseille. Now I will share a link to uh, the live stream where I painted the florals. Again, I wanna do more florals and I definitely plan on posting it as a separate video because many people missed it. But for now, let's do a cityscape. Think beyond the subject matter. I would actually argue that if you don't like the subject matter, this may work even better. Why? Because subjects you don't like, you get to see with cleaner eyes and you're not dazzled by them. And it's so funny to think about it this way, but it actually works. I believe that. Horizon line. That's somewhere below the edge of the buildings, okay? But you can just treat it honestly as the tops of the buildings. And that's it. Mountains, okay? What do these mountains do? Basically, they do that. I don't care about, you know, the zigzags. I'm trying to kind of get them right, but that's what they do. Okay, from the mountains, we drop a bit, we get to the buildings. From the buildings, we drop a bit and we get to where that river starts. Now, it doesn't actually start there, obviously. It curves all the way back or to the right, but it goes flat because of how it rotates and moves to this direction, okay? So we'll try and capture that. And then notice this point where it starts. If we go down a bit, that's where we capture that zigzag, okay? So these things matter and there's a tendency for people to flatten them. So instead of doing this, there's a tendency for people to do this. Don't fall into this trap because what you did was you raised the angle without wanting to, okay? You don't raise the angle, right? Have these a, a tight angle. This should be a very sharp angle. And then this goes back like that, goes down and goes, connects to the edge here, okay? Now. Other side, look at what happens here. This is a super thin part of the river, and then it opens up wide, okay? Much wider. Goes to the edge of the painting, and there's all sorts of details here. Yes, we can get all of those small details in if we want to, but it's all very flat, okay? Don't forget that. And then we have this little strip of boats, whatever that is. And then we have that same thing going on here in the middle. That's one shape, look at that, it's one shape. Now, if I want to show it in more detail, I can. So I can do this, drop a line here, separating them, and then imagine that I'm drawing these boats, okay? But I'm gonna paint this larger version using pretty much the same approach that I showed you earlier. It's super bizarre, but it's gonna work, okay? So we have this tons of boats and buildings and it's a port and it's crazy, right? And then we have tons of buildings in the back, right? I'm doing this just to mark to myself the pattern of light and shadow. There's just these buildings, right? And then we have more buildings on top of them, smaller. All of these aren't as important as what we did up to this point. Really does not matter as much. I know, it's super bizarre, that's just how it is. Drop that big building, that's the front of it, facing the river, right? Then there's a smaller wall here, get that in, get that top part of the building. What is this? What are these lines? I have no idea, I'm just putting them in, right? And then all sorts of small details. The edges of the shapes allow you to tell a good story. So near the edge here, why not put that boat that we see here? I don't even know what it looks like. I'm not even too focused on it. It's just a boat. It's just a compositional means. It has two very big um, posts, whatever you call it. We have another boat going through because now it's bigger. We can put in more details more efficiently. So we have this boat going away from us and it leaves these beautiful ripples. And then maybe another smaller one. And then maybe let's put in another small one and a tiny one. Uh, mast, sorry, that's the word, mast. There's tons of masts here, tons of masts here. That's all we need, let's paint. <laughs> I, mean, I know, I'm not kidding here. Uh, now, I do, I was wondering if I want to, let me actually zoom out a bit, then we'll talk. Okay, so once again, I wanted you to get the full view. I'm doing this a bit zoomed out to make sure that you see the water bucket and my um, paper towel and the... Um, palette itself. Let me move this just a bit. Now, I was wondering if I want to do this uh, in color, but let's 
actually keep it black and white because I want to show you how direct this is this process of just following those um, large shapes of value okay and we're gonna keep it as shapes of value we're gonna work with a black and white reference and we're not gonna paint the things we're not gonna paint clouds we're not gonna paint mountains we're not gonna paint boats we're gonna paint the shapes so let's start with the shape from the top we have the sky and yes there are some mountains in it so why not leave a few gaps sorry that's my phone <laughs> we'll mute it now uh, leave some gaps like this for mountains okay but look at what we're painting here we're just painting that shape of the sky which isn't white it's very important okay and then let's take another brush because we're here we're painting larger so we do want to make sure we get some more things correctly and let's actually blend some of these clouds with the sky okay something like this let's get a feeling of them being a part of it right and then if you want to you can lift them back even and make them a little more prominent but the most important thing is actually the sky here not the clouds okay so the clouds will do whatever they want to do the sky itself is responsible uh, now as we move down we get to the mountains but this isn't really mountains it's just a shape of value so we're gonna paint it we're gonna paint it it may look a little dark but don't forget this is gonna dry much lighter than it appears right now okay and one thing to remember is the shape matters here that's the one thing that matters so when I'm painting the mountains I'm also painting the edges of those buildings as a part of the city so what am I doing? I'm varying it up, okay? I'm varying these edges to make sure that it does show that there's a variety in the shapes of buildings and all sorts of small details. Now again, the larger you paint, the more opportunity you get to do this, right? Now we're gonna let the top dry, or you know what, even better, let's use the top to cut into some of the details on the buildings and make this shape even more varied with a bit of darker paint, okay? just because this is a great opportunity to show some of these rooftops, some of these smaller details, right? Like that, so abstract, so old looking, black and white kind of abstract look. And then actually let's cut into the shadows on the sides of the buildings that I have already indicated here. And we can even start adding some details on the buildings. What am I doing now? I'm, I basically already painted that shape because it's just white those shapes those buildings it's just one shape right now i'm already jumping into rendering its details why am i doing that because it's connected physically to the sky and mountains and that's a great opportunity for me to use that connection to have things smoother in the background to have the background not jump too much on me right for it to feel like uh, an inherent part of the painting not a cutout which is why i'm doing it right now okay now as we get a little lower you see there's just a bit fewer of these and we just get this weird pattern of shadows probably under boats or under whatever it is so I'm not putting as much of a strength on these these are just tons of boats in the dock or you know maybe a building here and there honestly it doesn't matter right the one thing I do see is that very gentle shadow on this building so why not let's paint that right similar value to the sky pretty wet not too dark but still not paper white right and then the building here is actually lighter. Maybe this, I don't, I don't even know what it is. Maybe a shadow or part of the building. But here we go. That's our building. There's a dock here or whatever that, that's a little darker. And that's pretty much it, right? You want to get a few details here up close to show there are some buildings that are up close. Whatever you want. But we are done with that shape. That's just a white shape. Okay, next up, switch back to our slightly larger brush. And here we're gonna go for a slightly darker value for the water, okay? Now, what's important when we paint this shape of the water? And you're gonna see it connect in front of your eyes. It's gonna be super cool. What is important? The shape, because it's, okay, we got the right value, but now the shape matters. So I need to make sure that I accommodate for all the beautiful edges I mentioned earlier and for the boat. So I'm gonna paint around this imaginary boat there see and then I'm gonna paint the edges in a way that actually feels like there's something there tons of boats tons of details right and look it looks a little strong but don't worry it's gonna uh, dry lighter and it's gonna while it spreads out become a little lighter too right and then cut into this shape right there's so much going on here who knows you can even 
add a bit now while you're painting the water, right? But this is just enhancing that shape. It's still this shape. Now look at how the water is gonna just connect in front of your eyes. You'll see it turn into water. So far it's just been mountains and white. But now we're bringing out the real details, right? We have this beautiful boat here. Let's paint around that. Let's add some strength. The water is closer, tend to be darker, but also we're losing some paint, right? So let's do that. We can already paint around some of these masts without even using opaque paint or the white gel pen. Let's just paint around them because we can, right? And move that wash, keep it moving. Keep it dark, just the right amount. Darker than the dock, but not too dark, okay? We're not going for black here because if we go for black, that's the darkest we cannot go any darker and that's gonna be a problem, right? There's the boat, there's the foam behind the boat. Look at what happens here. This turns into a beautiful scene, right? And of course, I'm doing this super small, so will it be as, uh, have as finesse as it could be? No, but the core principles of composition are there. Now, whether you can see it as what I planned for you to see it will depend, of course, on how good of a job I did in conveying all these small details. For example, right now, looking at this farthest area, it feels to me like there's so much going on there that I actually want to darken it completely, just parts of it, right? So this farther part, you see? And that may make it fall into its place better. This I'm gonna keep light for now. This also, because there's tons of boats, tons of details there. So I'm gonna keep this uh, make this a little darker, just a bit, right? This as well, just sides of the buildings. Look at how it gives it a bit of a better context, right? Then you can take your tiny brush and all of the, the following doesn't matter as much as what we did so far, remember that. But you can start adding maybe a few more masts, maybe a few small details, right? These will tell the story. It's, they're not as important, but they will tell the story. Maybe add a shadow under this, maybe add a shadow at the bottom of this boat, right? To show where it touches the water, maybe this edge here and then maybe add the masts, right? A mast or two can go a long way. This building is close, add a few details, add a few windows, add the top, right? The top structure, very old building. Add a few windows here just to show this is a building, right? But these things are just the small details. They're, they aren't as important as the way we structure this, right? And I even missed a spot here, right here, let's go over it like that, even though we're running the risk of this starting to dry, that's fine. It's not the end of the world, right? Then we'll get some masts on the boats that are close to us. Just a few dark ones, because later we're gonna use a bit of opaque paint maybe, right? And then here and there. Put a few strong shadows under a few of the, so whatever these are, boats, you know, whatever this is, right? A bit under the foam here. A bit of a detail here on what was a boat, you know? All of these small things, that's just extra. What matters the most is the overall, right? The overall structure of this thing. That's the thing that matters the most. Then we can pick up our white gel pen. And at this point, I'm gonna zoom in more closely on the reference photo, because I want to make sure that you see uh, the values accurately from afar, I was afraid maybe you don't. And then I can just start putting in tons of masts here. Look at all of these masts coming out into the water, basically, of all of these boats, see? And that can help, that's gonna be a part of it. That's gonna be another effect, right? It's not a must, but it's gonna be another effect. I just wanna show you how with such, and you can recreate shapes you've lost, right? If you see a beautiful shape coming out into the water, you can paint that back, right? But even with this complex of a scene, that's what it's all about. It's those big shapes, that's what matters. The rest is just, you know, decorations, right? Um, and also, one more note to add, composition does play a role in a way that if you want to bring more emphasis, let's say, to the front, you may want to darken some of these buildings. Maybe not as much as I did just now, add a bit of water, and you may want to just dumb down some of the highlights, right? You may choose to do that. You don't have to, but you may choose to. Then it will immediately scream or bring out the focal point to the front, right? Maybe you want to strengthen this area, so you'll end up adding a few details to that. And I know we're borderline, uh, uh, borderline um, uh, abstract here, but that's exactly the point. Do this, practice this, apply this. A lot of times you will be able to turn that abstract 
into uh, something that is not abstract, but actually means something and is fresh and beautiful. And I feel like this building needs some strength to it. So I'm just going a little darker, right? And then maybe there are a few details, a few antennas or whatever satellite dishes on top of it. You can add those in back with some opaque paint. You can do whatever you want, right? Uh, you can bring back a few lost highlights over there, but that's the gist of it. And the thing that brings us there ultimately is this. This brings us there, right? Now you can do five, 10 of these, figure out which ones turn out the best and develop them into paintings. So for me, honestly, I feel like this turned out really well and th these two actually turned out really well. This one too, but these two especially. So maybe these two are worth developing into a painting, right? I hope that makes sense. I hope that helps and shows you how simple it is. That's all you really need. So let's conclude. So real fast, I don't want to bore you with too long of uh, outros. Look at this, right? This is something anyone can learn how to do. Even more complex paintings end up being just three, four, five major shapes of value. Do this, practice this, then practice expanding it to this and ultimately bring color into the picture. That is all that matters. I really hope you enjoyed this one. Don't forget to check out the Frustration Free Watercolor course. The link in the description box below will show you exactly how to let go, enjoy the painting process and get the results you want. Then you also may want to check out the drawing course. It talks about just drawing from observation, not overthinking it, nothing like that. Learn how to draw accurately from observation. I will probably drop a link to the Discord as well. I want to see you there. I want to see you join some good conversations there. Great community. Leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts. Leave a like. If you like this one, subscribe if you still aren't, and I will see you in the next vid real soon.